All right, so in this video lesson, we are going to learn about rational exponents. Okay. All right, so let's get started with the simplest idea about the rational exponents right here. All right, so anyone, anyone viewing the video lesson up to this point is well familiar with what a, an nth root of a number a is. And this is for some n value, for, for some n root being order 2 or higher. And so the idea of rational exponent is that starting from this nth root right here, it is now understood as a being raised to the 1 over nth power. And this is a rational exponent. Okay, So we used to understand that this notation here is the nth root of a. So now nth, nth root of a is understood as the value a raised to the 1 over nth power. And this power here, this exponent here, is a rational number. So now I'm seeing this here as a rational exponent. Okay, we're looking at the exponent one over n of of a, and so this is the major definition for us. And this is true for all n greater than or equal to two. All right, so now we are ready for doing a couple examples right here. So in my example one right here, let's evaluate the first problem here we want to evaluate is this, the power one half of 25, okay? And so now from the understanding that we have just now seen right here, a power one half of 25, that is understood as the square root of 25, okay? So technically or theoretically speaking, this is, this is supposedly the root order 2 of 25. But as a worldwide convention, we write it as a square root notation. And so in this way right here, in order to evaluate 25 to the power 1 half right here, that is the same as 25 to the power 1 half is understood as the square root of 25. And, and now that's easy to understand for us. And the answer comes out being 5 as the square root of 25 equals 5. All right, part B of the example here as another problem to evaluate, to get comfortable with operating with uh, rational exponents. So here I'm looking at 64 raised to the 1 third power. 64 raised to the 1 third power. So the power here, the exponent here is a rational number. And so in the way how I'm, I'm understanding it from our previous uh, definition that we've seen on the board, 64 to the 1 third power is understood as the cube root of 64. Okay, and now after, uh, after expressing the 1 third power of 64 here as the cube root of 64, this work now is very easy for anyone. So cube root of 64 is 4. And once again, uh, going back to our understanding the, the, about roots, then the reason the answer being 4 is because simply 4 raised to the third power equals uh, 64. But so that's how we evaluate 64 to the 1 third as a rational exponent. All right, part C of the example, just as another prop for us to get comfortable with evaluating a number being raised to a rational power, then 256 to the 1 fourth power, 256 to the 1 fourth power is understood as the fourth root, straight out from the definition that we have had. So fourth root of 256. And so the answer here at this point comes out being four. And this is simply because 4 to the 4th power equals 256. All right, and in part D of the example, just another evaluation problem to get comfortable with the, the, the operating with the, a rational exponent. However, here we're looking at a negative 64 in parentheses raised to the 1 third power. Okay, so we have learned that from earlier understanding about power. So all properties of, uh, of exponents apply here, even though we're now working with rational exponents. All properties of, of exponents apply. So here, in the way how I'm seeing it, according to order of operations, in parentheses is here, whatever quantity inside parentheses is having higher priority than raising power. 
And so in that way right here, the negative 64 must be included, must be included before the raising to a, the, the one third power. So in that way of understanding, now minus 64 all to the one third power is understood as the cube root of, now I'm putting the negative 64 completely inside of my cube root. So I'm treating that negative 64 here as the radicand. So cube root of negative 64 is now negative 4. And so we have found the answer to that problem. Part E of the example here, just another evaluation problem, just to bring more experience for anyone learning from the lesson right here. So very similar to part D that we have done. So minus 64 in parentheses raised to a one half power. I mentioned about there's order of operation. So in this way, according to the order of operation, minus 64 to the one half must be understood as the square root of negative 64. This, the reason for that is simply because we must raise the entire, including the sign right here, the entire negative 64 with the sign to the one half power. And so that is to be understood as that we're taking the square root of the entire negative 64 inside the square root as the radicand. But now from our understanding about even root, so we have an undefined answer. So our answer here is, turns out undefined simply because we cannot take square root or generally any even root of a negative number. All right, so now allow me to bring in a demonstration problem right here. And by the end of the, the demonstration problem here, we should be able to draw out some further conclusion and push our learning into some further details here, OK? And so what I'm having here, the, the problem here is asking us to write this expression, this root expression here as a rational exponent. So let's find out how we can do that. So in the way how I'm looking at this, currently we're having cube root of 5 squared. The way how I'm verbalizing it, cube root of 5 squared. So what it means here is that really what it means is that we, according to the order of operations that I mentioned in, in the lessons about roots, then in the way how it's written like this, it means we have to finish calculating out the power inside the root the, and the parentheses increase, uh, it, uh, increase the, uh, the order of operation. And so after that grouping, then we, then we take the, the cube root. And so in that way right here now, I can see that it's the same as a five square being raised to the one third power because whichever will come out for five square right here, the cube root overall is just simply gonna be understood as a one third power. But then this is not the final intention of the instruction of this problem. The, the real intention of this problem is to write that as one overall rational exponent. Right now we have we have a, an exponent being inside another exponent, okay? And so now at this point, allow me to bring in a reminder, all right? And this reminder comes out from our previous learning. A to the n, then raised to the power m, must equal A to the power n times m. And so we can see that these two powers right here, these two power n and m, must be multiplied together to come up with a final power of A. All right, and so with, this, with the reminder that we have just seen on the computer screen right here, then this now, and we can utilize that understanding from our previous understanding. Now the two powers here, I can simply multiply those two numbers together. So I'm looking at five being the base, two as a number multiplied with one third. And so now two multiplied with one third, our final, our final answer here comes out being five to the two third power. Five to the two thirds power. And this is how we have reached our ultimate final goal right here. We write the root expression here as a, as a rational exponent. One base and then with one rational exponent. Okay. And then let me open another note right here. Think about the same problem. 
what if we had cube root of 5 and being raised to the power 2 here? Okay. And once again, same goal for the problem, same ultimate goal. We would like to express this root expression with some powers right here being uh, uh, expressed that into a rational exponent. So the way how I'm doing that. Now, order of operation here is indicating that we must take the root first. Then, according to the grouping parentheses is here, then we raise that to the power 2. So in that way, the cube root of 5 inside the grouping parentheses is, I'm turning that in the parentheses, I'm turning that into 5 to the 1 third power, okay? Because that's for our understanding of cube root just now is understood as a rational, a rational exponent, 1 third. But then, and then we raise that to the power 2. And with the same property that I brought up you know, on the computer screen, that reminder from our previous learning, then now we can do this, the following. This is the same as 5, and now I can multiply the two powers here, power 1 third will be multiplied with power 2. The final power will come out being, so we have 5 to the 2 third power. But so wait a minute, that is exactly the same 2 thirds power in the, the earlier demonstration that I brought in. And so now we come up with even a better you know, generality, and this is a final generality. Some mth root of an a to the n will be equal to some m root of a that's raised to the n power and all will all equals to a to the n over m and this is one generality and that from now on the opens up more the possibilities for us in order to express a root expression in either one of these two forms right here into a final rational exponent. All right, so now we are ready to apply what we have just discovered into doing an evaluation problem. So let me call that example two. And in the first problem of, of example two, I call that part A. Let's evaluate, let's come up with the final calculated value for 25 to the 3 halves power. 25 to the 3 halves power, okay? And so, to ca and the point is to be able to do this uh, without or with the minimal of the, the usage of calculator. Okay, so here's how I'm seeing it: 25 uh, now to the three halves power. According to our the learning that we have just now the reached to, then we can express this as either as 25. The denominator in our rational exponent is now the root, and then we can raise that to the third power. That's one way of doing it. Then this will come to, according to the order of operation, now we must, it's indicating that we must calculate the square root of 25 first, which gives me a 5. Then after that, we take the cube, cubic power right here, and that gives me 125. That is our final answer. And that is just one way of doing that. Same expression you could have done alternatively. The denominator in our rational exponent is a 2. And then the numerator of our rational exponent is a 3. So I'm seeing that as 25 to the third power. Then we take the square root. And this may be a little more challenging. This may be a little more challenging for, 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 for anyone because we need a, some calculating power. But the overall answer can still be com coming out as 125. And so I have shown two different approaches right here. Some one of the two approach here will work better for, for anyone learning from the lessons here. So, but that's how the, we're working with a problem like this. We learn, we're evaluating the, a number being raised to a rational exponent. All right, so part B of the example, just another problem for us here to evaluate. Here we're looking at minus 25 to the 3 halves power. And so order of operations matters. We must raise, because the negative sign here is equivalent to subtracting a power. So we must raise uh, the, the number 25 here to the power 3 halves first. Then we, sub we, we subtract that from 0 or making it a negative afterwards. Okay. And so in that way, the one way of to, uh, one way of understanding it, 
minus 25 to the 3 halves power. The 3 halves power, once again, I'm seeing that as the square root of 25. Then I'll raise that to the third power. Whatever that result will be, I'll put a negative sign in front right here. Okay? And so now that comes out, again, according to order of operations, we take the square root, and in this way how I wrote it, we'll take the square root of 25 first, making it a 5. Then we raise you to the third power, then we take the negative of that. Okay? And so the final answer here comes out being negative 125. The same problem here, we could have done that as whichever is easier for anyone viewing your lesson. But still, we must, in this way, about the rational exponents, I can take that as a 25 to the third power. Then we take the square root. So it's a little bit different in the order of operation. Then we take the, the negative side of that, the negative sign of that. So now it comes out being negative uh, 125 again. For me, personally, this route is slightly more challenging because I need a calculator to figure out 25 to the third power, or the, we, we still have to take more steps. I, I cut some, I cut out some steps here, okay? But uh, some viewer learning from the lesson here may find this route right here is easier than the, than the other route. But any one of these two routes right here simply just utilize the, the understanding about how we can express generally a rational exponent. And now the numerator is no longer just one. All right, so part C of the example, just another problem to get comfortable with calculating uh, or evaluating a value at a, to, a, to a rational power over here. So in a way how it looks, we're looking at negative, in per, negative 25 in parentheses raised to the 3 halves power. So order of operation says we must take the negative number, then raise the entire negative number because grouping is making negative sign you know, uh, being effective to that number right here to become the highest priority. And then now we're going to raise, so that means the negative sign is included with the number. Now we're going to raise that to the 3 halves power. So that means, uh, now I can see that as, we're taking the square root of negative 25. And if it would come out with a value, then we would raise that to the third power. Because once again, y square root, the denominator, the denominator in our rational exponents produces the, the square root. And then that, that numerator here produces the, the power. Okay? But now, in this problem right here, from the inside out, we cannot take square root, or in general, or generally speaking, we cannot take an nth root of a negative number right here. And so in that case right here, the, the, the square root of negative 25 is an undefined value, so raising to the third power is still going to come out undefined. So our final answer here must be decided as an undefined answer. All right, so now we're in example three right here. And example three here, the instruction says, uh, write the following root expression as a rational exponent. So in part A, we have an expression here, a variable u square, and then being inside of a fifth root right here, or another way of saying it's fifth root of u square. Okay, and so, so from what we have understood uh, uh, from the general learning, then at this point right now, see, this fifth root right here will be, so we're writing that as u, the power here must be expected to be as a rational exponent. So the fifth root now becomes uh, the denominator of our rational exponent, and the power two right here will become the numerator of our rational exponent. That's how we are done with that. Now we're looking at part B of the example. What it says here is square root of uh, b to the fifth power. b to the fifth power is inside of the square root, but doesn't matter. So now I'm looking at b as being the base. The root here is going to be the denominator of our the rational exponent. So we have a rational exponent. The root here is a square root, so it's going to be denominator 2 for that rational exponent. The power here inside or outside, now it shouldn't matter. The power here is a power of 5. We should write it in the numerator of our uh, rational exponent. So now our final answer, square root of b to the fifth is understood as b to the 5 halves power.
All right, so in part C of the example, what we're looking at now is cube root of C then being raised to the fifth power. Okay, so writing that as a rational exponent, I must now write C as the base, then we're going to have to expect some rational exponents. The roots here, the order of the root here is indicating that we're having a, the denominator 3 in our rational exponents. The power here, see, sometimes it can be written outside of the root, sometimes it can be written inside of the root, but that's going to be the same. We're going to put that in the numerator of our you know, rational exponent. So now, Q root of C all raised to the fifth power is now understood as C to the 5 thirds power. All right, so part D of the example over here, just another one for anyone to uh, get comfortable with re-expressing a uh, root expression into a uh, rational expression. And so here I'm looking at fourth root of P then raised to the third power. And so now in the way how I'm doing it, I will write the base P. The fourth root of P is now indicated as the denominator of our rational exponents. Then in the numerator, I'll put in that three. Okay. And that is how we have found our final answer. All right, so now allow me to bring in another demonstration problem right here. I call that problem number two here. And after going through this uh, demonstration problem, hopefully we, will be we should be able to come up with a, some further generality and, and draw out for ourselves some further learning details here. Okay, so the problem we're having here is we're having a fraction 1 over the cube root of 2. And then the instruction of the problem is asking us to, hey, let's write the following root expression as a rational exponent. We got fraction, and then in, in the fraction, in the denominator of the fraction, we have a root expression. And then we want to write all that as, as one rational exponent. Okay, so how can we do that? So now apply what we have learned up to this point, applying what we have learned up to this point. I'm not going to be too worried about the numerator 1 here yet, so I'm still leaving it here. So 1 over the cube root of 2 in the denominator now with our understanding up to this point. We can rewrite that as a 2 to the 1 third power. So now I'm, this fraction is understood as 1 over 2 to the 1 third power. However, right now we're still having a fraction. And in the fraction here, we do have some rational exponents being involved. But, but that's not the final intention of the problem. The problem one, one wants us to really write that as one final. See, it's saying a rational exponent, but really it means just one final rational exponent. We don't want to see fraction here. Okay, and so here's one step we can go further. But in that way, allow me to bring in another reminder right here. So let's look at that on the computer screen. So as a reminder, one over a power n of a must equal a to the power negative n. Or you can see that the other way around. a to a negative power n must equal 1 over a to the n. All right, so after being reminded from the, what, from the result we've learned from previous courses, then now I can see this as 2 to the negative 1 third power that reminder on the, pro on, the pro on the property of powers applies the same here, even though we're now working with rational exponents. But all properties of powers applies to the work we're doing here as well. So that's why I now have, it was 1 over 2 to some power, some power, rational or non-rational whatsoever. But two, 1 over 2 to the some power. Now we can write it as 2 to the negative power. So the power here is the power 1 half. So now I'm writing that as 2 to the negative one third power. Okay. All right, so now we are ready for another example and let's call that example four here in our problem. Let's say we want to evaluate 36 to the negative one half power and this particular problem here, let's call that part A of our example. Okay, and so 36 to the negative one half power according to what we have just now learned and be reminded then we can Understand this, 36 to the negative 1 half power as 1 over 36 to the positive 1 half power. Then now we can think of that further as square root of 36 in the denominator. 
and square root of 36 in the denominator now according to the order of operation. Square root must be done before dividing. So we're looking at 1 in the numerator, but divided by taking the square root of 36, that gives me 6. So our final answer here is a final 1, 6. Okay. All right, part B of our example, just another problem for anyone learning from the lesson here to get real comfortable with evaluating a number that's being raised to a negative power. And so from the learning that we have uh, generalized from that the demonstration problem, just prior to this example, then 27 to the negative 4 thirds power can now be understood as 1 over the 27 but raised to the power of positive 4 thirds. Okay, and now with that denominator being a 27 to the 4 third power, I can rewrite that further as 1 over the cube root of 27, then raise that to the 4th power. I see for myself that it's easier for me to take the cube root first, even though it's the, the order here shouldn't matter. You can also write that as 27 to the 4th and take the cube root. But right now in front of me, I don't have a calculator, so going this route requires me to raise the 27 to the fourth power first, which is more calculation work for me. So I would rather go cube root of 27 to bring that down to a small number, then I'm going to raise that to the fourth power. So now in that way, with, after my explanation of, of my own personal steps, uh, then now it's going to become 1 over cube root of 27 is 3, to the fourth. And the final answer comes out 1 over 80, 81. And that's how I've done that work with that. All right, so now part C of the example. What I'm looking at here is minus 64 to the negative 3 halves power. Okay, and again, I have to, uh, to remind anyone about the order of operation. So we have a negative. Well, we have a negative 64 to the negative 3 halves power. So the order of operation says we must raise 64 itself to the power, whatever, whichever indicated here. Then we're going to take the negative side of that. Okay. So now in that way, here's how I'm seeing it. It's the same as negative then 1 over 64 to the 3 halves power, but now positive 3 halves power. And I put that in the denominator and the negative sign gets carried out down here. Okay, and so now in my next step right here, the negative sign stays the same. Okay. What I'm looking at now is 64 raised to the th 3 halves power is understood as the square root of 64. Then I'm going to raise that to the third power. For me, this route is always better because taking the roots first is going to bring the number down to smaller and then it's easier to raise to a power. That's just how I approach that personally. And now the answer comes out negative 1 over 512. So negative 64 to the minus 3 halves power comes out negative 1 over 512. All right, so now we're at example 5 right here, where we are asked to write any of the given expression as a rational exponent. And so we have been through quite a few examples with this similar instruction right here. So when it says write the expression as a rational expression, the intention here is to write that as one final, the base raised to a final uh, rational expression right here, and no fraction involved in our expression, in our final expression. So in that way, here's how I'm seeing it. Part A, 1 over the fifth root of uh, m to the third. 1 over, but in the denominator, the fifth root of m to the third power. And so in that way, here's how I'm seeing it. I can rewrite the, de the denominator here as m to the 3 fifths. And from our understanding just now, a power in the denominator can be written as m to the negative 3 fifths. And this is the true intention of what we are asked for right here. Because right now, with this answer right here, we still, even though we have some power, but it's still being involved in a fraction. So we want to write that in one final rational exponent right here, the negative rational exponent. And so this is our answer, m to the minus negative 3 fifths.
All right, so part B of the example, we are asked to write this expression here as a rational exponent. So 1 over the fourth root of p cubed. So the way I'm seeing it, the denominator can be written as p to the 3 fourths power because it was fourth root of p cubed. But now this expression right here has some, even though having some uh, exp exponent, but it's not our final intention. So we're going to rewrite it as p to one final pow rational power, the negative 3 fourths power. And this is our final answer over here. That expression turns into, is expressed as p to the negative 3 fourths power. All right, part C of the example here. Once again, we are asked to express, to write that expression here as a rational exponent. And so in how I'm seeing it, 1 over the cube root of c being raised to the fifth. The cube root of c then raised to the fifth in the denominator. So the denominator here can be rewritten as c to the 5 third power. However, this is not our final answer because we're still having a, as an overall picture here a fraction. So let's write it as c to the negative 5 thirds power and this is all due to that learning we've, le we've had prior to getting to these uh, examples. Alright, so let me now bring in another reminder. So let's look at what we have here on the computer screen here. A power n of base a multiply with a p another power m of the same base a right here. This can all be combined into one power base a to the power n plus m. And we can clarify this property th th that we have been reminded just now with a quick some quick calculation problem. Think about a 3 square, a power 2 of 3, and multiply with now a different power, let's say 3 to the 4th power, so power 2 of 3 multiply with power 4 of 3, same base. So from our past courses, from our previous learning, we should know that it's now going to be, be really just 3 to the 2 plus 4, making it 6. And so that all comes out being 7, 29. And so this property was learned from previous courses. And so in that case, really, we apply that learning into another quick calculation problem right here. How about power one-third of 5, or another way of saying 5 to the power one-third, multiply with 5 to the power one-half. These two right here, these two powers, they have the same base 5 right here. So now we can think of this as an overall power 5 to a final power being whichever the sum of one-third and one-half. And so now at, with, at our level here in math, right here, at our majority in math, right here, we should be able to easily uh, come, uh, add these two fractions right here. These two fractions would unlike denominator. So the answer comes out being 5 to the 5 6 power. We can leave that in rational exponent form, or we can think of that as the 6 root of 5 then we raise that to the fifth power. But in any one of these two cases, the answer will definitely come out being a decimal over right here. So we'd rather leave that as an inexact expression. And the problem like this, if, that I'm still currently demonstrating, think about the 5 to the 1 third power. It means uh, sometimes the same problem here can be written as cube root of 5 times a uh, square root of 5 because of that rational power of 1 half on the 5 right here. And so all of that work right here will be, yes, exactly the same as 5 to the 1 third power plus 1 half. And that's the only way of how we can eventually combine it and make it all into one root expression or one rational expression. All right, so let's now apply what we have just been, what we have just learned along with what we have just been reminded into this ev uh, evaluation problem right here. So in example six, we're asked to evaluate this problem right here. So
So in part A, we're asked to evaluate 2 to the 1 half power times 2 to the 5 half power. Okay? Now, so be aware that the problem could have been written as, or it means, this problem means uh, square root of 2 times uh, the square root of 2 to the fifth. That's another way of understanding this exact same problem right here. Or you can also think of that as this problem means square root of 2 times square root of 2 to the fifth power. All right. And so in that way, either way of writing it right here, but back to this very you know, ordinary form, very first form of the problem, how it was written right here. Then the rule for power says we can just come up to a, a base 2 to the power of 1 half plus 5 halves. 1 half plus 5 halves. And so now, as a final power, it's base 2, the 2 powers 1 half and 5 halves. After summing up, it's going to give me 6 halves, which is now the usual way of how we operate with fractions. 6 over 2 is a power 3. So now it's a 2 to the third power, or the real final, final answer, 8. All right, part B of our example. So we have here 3 to the power negative 2 fifths times same base 3 to the power 7 fifths. Okay, and so with our understanding at this point, we can do the problem as following. We can write it as one common base. The two powers now will sum up. So what I'm looking at here is minus 2 fifths plus 7 fifths. And I'm just directly using the property we have just now been reminded about uh, the powers like that. And so now the overall answer comes out being 3. The two powers here, after summing up, become 5 over 5 power. And 5 over 5, that rational number right here is nothing but just 3 to the first power, or the answer is finally just 3. All right, so let's utilize what we have just now learned and been reminded from our past courses into another problem where we have an expression. So we, want, we are asked to write the following expression as a rational exponent. Okay, so in part A of the example, we have an expression as following x times square root of x. And so the way how I'm seeing it, what I have here is x times square root of x. I set it out verbally. But now we have learned that each one of these here has a power. x here is today first power. The square root of x here is understood as the x to the one half power. So we have a power of x times a power, another power of x. And so now from the property we have just learned, we can rewrite this as x to the power of one plus one half, whichever comes out from one plus one half. And one plus one half gives me a final fraction being 3 halves. So I'm looking at x raised to the 3 halves power. Okay, And so x times square root of x can be written as x to the 3 halves power. All right, so part b of the example, what we're looking at here is the cube root of x times fifth root of x. So in the way I'm seeing it, cube root of x can be re-expressed as the power of 1 third on the x. The fifth root of x can be re-expressed as the power one-fifth on the x. And now we multiply these two powers, these two exponents together. So from what we have just now been reminded, then we're rewriting this as one base x right here, but one power that w which came out from whichever the sum of one-third and uh, one-fifth. And so now adding one-third and one-fifth, we must make common denominator and all that. And so now we're looking at x to the power of uh, 8 fifteenths. And that is our final expression right here as a rational exponent of x. All right, so part c of the example. Now what I'm seeing here is a 1 over the product of x squared and cube root of x. 1 over the product of x squared and cube root of x. So just be careful with the way how the symbols are written. Sometimes it, it may be a little bit misleading, but the way how I'm seeing it, it's a product, even though it was not clearly indicated. It's a product between x squared and cube root 
of x. Okay, and so now our instruction once again we are asked to rewrite this expression here as a rational exponent. So x raised to some overall power. That's the intention of this problem right here. And so in the way how I'm seeing it, one over in the product in the denominator, I can write it as the following: x squared times x to the one third power, because the cube root is now understood as the one third power. The cube root on the x is understood as the one third power. And then now I can utilize what I've done from the earlier parts of the example. So here we it's x to the power two plus one third in the denominator. And now further, it's still 1 over 2 plus 1 third as a final fraction gives me x to the power of 7 thirds. And now with our understanding that we've had previously, then this overall fraction can now be written as base x but raised to 1 rational power being the negative 7 thirds. And that is how we have completed our problem right here. All right, so allow me to bring in another reminder from out uh, the learning from a previous course here. But as far as another property of, uh, of powers, then we can have a power m of base a divided by another power, let's say power n of base a. This quotient between the two powers, same base, on the same base, can be equal to or is equal to base a but raised to the power an overall power m minus n all right and so from that uh, reminder from the general property of the uh, powers that we've learned from a, a previous course right there, then uh, let's do a quick demonstration so think about 5 to the fourth power divided by 5 squared right here yes we 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 can just simply do 5 to the power of the total power being 4 minus 2. And that will make it. So 4 minus 2 is a power 2, so 5 squared at, at, the, at the end. And that's making it all together 25. And then similarly, we can have something like this. With our understanding, with our curtain understanding. 2 to the 4 thirds power. So we have a power being a rational exponent. And the rule we've been reminded applies here too. So base 2 to the 4 thirds power divided by same base 2, but we're having a 1, one half power. Okay? And so now that we can, we can think of this calculation here as base 2, but raising to the, an overall power of 4 thirds minus 1 half. And now with a little bit of subtracting the fractions right here, I'm looking at 2 to the power 5, 6. And that is how I found my final answer. And of course, an answer like this, we need a calculator to get a, a final decimal expression like that for that. And as a further impact of this quick demonstration right here, think about the 2 to the 4 thirds power. It means that, it means that sometimes when we are asked to do cube root of 2 to the 4th divided by square root of 2. That overall root problem can be simplified down to the 6th root of 2 to the 5th. That's one way of seeing it. Or we can see that as the 6th root of 2 then raised to the 5th power. A different way of writing that. All right, so now let's apply what we have learned into doing an, an example here. So let's call it example 8. And in here, we're asked to simplify this expression right here. So what we have here is x to the 4 thirds power divided by x to the 1 third power. Okay, so the expression looks extremely complicated from the beginning. But now, after observing it, we can see that we have a one common base right here. In the numerator, I have base x to the 4 thirds power. In the denominator, I have base x to the one third power. And so now the rule of powers we've, just, we've learned just now, we've been reminded just now, can be applied here. So we can write it as x to the power of four thirds minus one third. So we're putting x here as one common base and 
the final power will come will come out being whichever the, the outcome of four thirds minus one third. And so now I'm looking at x today. Four thirds minus one third gives me three thirds, which is just x, because that's x to the power one, and that is x. And so from a very large and, and uh, complicated looking expression, we have now simplified that down to just simply x. All right, so now allow me to bring in another reminder from our past learning, as the learning from, our, from one of our past courses. The property is saying that the power n of a product is equal to the product between the power n of a and the power n of b. And so this property here is back then understood or regarded as the distributive property of a, of a, of a power on a product. And so in the same way, a power n on a, of a quotient a over b is equal to the power n of a in quotient with the power n of b. And this is also regarded as the distributive property of a power on a quotient. All right, so now allow me to bring in another demonstration problem right here. So in this problem, let me bring back something we have learned from our earlier lectures, uh, from our earlier lessons about uh, the square root property. So taking the square root of a product is the same as taking the product of the two square roots. And then this same exact property was also extended to the higher root, like the cube root, the fourth root, the nth root. But let me just focus with the square root right here. But so now bringing back this property from our lessons about square roots, allow me to bring in a question in this problem three right here. We want to know why this is true. We want to know what makes this true. So I'm stating the question as following. In problem three, we want to find out why does it hold? Why does it hold that the square root of a product A times B equals to the product of square root A and square root B? Why? Because back in, in the lessons about uh, roots and square roots and, and general nth root, right here, I only stated that property and I did a couple demonstrations to, 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 show, to show how it's true. But this is how we can formally sort of prove it. Okay? So, so now in our understanding at this point, in this lesson here, the square root of the product A times B is understood now in our understanding up to this point. The power one half of uh, the product A and B. Okay? And so now in that way right here, with the property you, we have just all been reminded from our previous course, from the learning of our of a, a previous course, then we can write that as an A to the one half power times A B to the one half power according to the distributive property on a product of a power. Okay? And now let's look at that, each of these uh, more closely right here. A to the one half power is exactly the same as square root of A in product with square root of B. And that is the reason why starting with square root of a product, now we made our way to arrive at square root of A in product with square root of B. And that is the reason why this is true. Same way in, and the still in the same exact uh, demonstration problem, and I call that problem three right here, why does it hold true that the square root of a quotient A over B is equal to the square root of A over the square root of B, or the quotient between square root of A and, and the square root of B, provided, provided that B must be a positive quantity. Okay, but this requirement is not too important here. The, the, main I, the, the main thing I want to explain is why is it true that the square root of a quotient equals the square root of A divided by the square root of B? So let me apply that same arguments here. The square root of A over B, or the square root of this quotient is understood as the power of one half on this quotient A over B. And that is according to the distributive property of power over a quotient. We can write this as a to the power 1 half divided by b to the power 1 half. And that is now the same as in the numerator, the square root of a 
and in the denominator, the square root of b. And that is the reason why I've made my way from square root of a quotient to be equal to the, the quotient of the two square roots. All right, so let's apply our understanding just now that we've been reminded from previous the, the learning into a, an example. And so part A of this example nine, we're looking at being, we're being asked to simplify the 64 r to the 3 fifths all raised to the power one third. Okay. okay, and so in order to simplify this expression right here, what I see here is I have a product in the parentheses here. I have a product between 64 and r to the 3 fifths power. And then after that product, the product is raised to the power one third. And so the distributive property of powers that we have just now been reminded can be applied here, which makes it 64 to the one third power times r to the three fifths power raised to the one third. And so I've just now uh, applied the distributive property of uh, the powers here on that product. And so 64 to the one third power, we have good understanding that this is going to be just four because this is the same as the cube root. And now we have had properties of powers that we have learned prior to this example right here that we can now multiply. This is r to, one to a power and then raised to another power. So we can multiply these two powers together, making it r to the 3 fifths times 1 third. And so in my next step right here, it's the coefficient 4 times r to the now 3 fifths times 1 fifth. The 3 will cancel out in a, in a fraction. In the, in the exponent. Now I'm looking at r to the one fifth power, and this is my final simplified expression. All right, and so part b of the example here, I'm looking at the product of u to the 12 and v to the 18, all being raised to the power of one sixth. Let's simplify that, okay? And so apply, applying the distributive property of, of power over a product right here, we can write the expression as following. u to the 12 then being raised to the 1 6 power. And we can take the product of, of that with v to the 18 being raised to the 1 6 power. So basically what I did here is I distributed that power 1 6 to each of the u to the 12 and v to the 18 and produced this. But now according to our understanding that we've had up to this point right here, you raise, being raised to a, a power, power 12 here, but ba basically being raised to a power and then raised to another power, then that is the same as u to the 12 times uh, 1 6. And then we're in product with v to the 18 times uh, 1 6. And so now in my next step, 12 times 1 6 is a is a fi final power 2, so u squared times 18 times 1 6 is a fi gives me a final power being a 3. So now I'm looking at u squared times v cubed right here. And then in a nicer form, u squared times v cubed. All right, so part C of the example. Let's look at the quotient of u to the fourth over 8, v, v to the 12, all raised to the 1 6 power. Okay, so with the distributive property of power that we have learned, the distributive property of power over a quotient, then we can do the following. u to the fourth, then raised to the one sixth power. And we divide that by eight, v to the 12, r to the one sixth power. And then for now, let me hold on to that numerator. u to the fourth, raised to the 1 6 power. Let's pay a little more attention to the denominator here. What I have here is a product between 8 and v to the 12. And by the way, 8 here is a, as a quick explanation, 8 here is the same as 2 cubed. Okay? And so now I can write that as 2 cubed raised to the 1 6 power times v to the 12 raised to the 1 6 power. All right. 
because I simply apply the distributive property of the one six power here of a power to a product where we have a product of eight and v to the twelve. And I explained earlier that eight is understood as a two to the third power. So now we are ready to make the final power. This u to the fourth and then to the one six uh, one six power is the same as u to the four times uh, six is a four six power. 3 cubed to the 1 6 power is the same as 2 to the 3 times 1 6, making it a 3 6 power. In product with V to the, so now 12 times 1 6, making it a 12 over 6. And so now let's simplify each one of these uh, rational expressions. And so our final answer comes out being U to the 2 thirds in the numerator because 4 6 reduces down to Two thirds. Three six reduces down to a one half, so it's two to the one half power. Twelve over six re reduces down to just two, so times v squared. Like that. And this is going to be our final expression. All right, so we are now at example ten right here. So. In example 10, we have the following instruction. Let's simplify the given expression by combining it into one root expression. Okay, So the ultimate goal is that we want something that's with one root expression, whatever that power here. right? And then we got this a to some power and then b to some power. But we want one root expression instead of a product of two separate root expressions. Okay, And that's the, 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 some explanation about the, the ultimate goal of the problem here. But now in that way right here, if we simply apply our understanding from roots, from, the le from our learning about roots right here, then this is not possible for us. Because uh, we, if we have the same order of roots, for example, if it's both fourth root of A and the same fourth root of B, then yes, we can combine that into a fourth power, I mean a fourth root of A times B. That's not uh, a surprise to anyone who have already learned, who has already learned about the roots. But the problem we have here is, is a product of two different roots at different root order. Okay? So now with our understanding about rational expression, we are able to do this task right here. We can find our way to bring that into one root expression. So here's how I'm seeing it. Fourth root of A is understood as A to the one fourth power. Fifth root of b is understand as b to the one fifth power, and we, in product of that, we take that both of that in product. So now, with the two rational expressions here, they have unlike denominators and all that, all crazy unlike denominators, and that's the point. What I would like to do is I'm going to make a, I'm going to rewrite each of these rational exponents here to have the common denominator, to have the LCD, the least common denominator. So again, I repeat, I am my next step here is to rewrite each of these rational expressions to have the least common denominator. And so the, the least common denominators between these two denominators here must be denominator 20. And so now I'm going to have to rewrite a here. Instead of power 1 fourth, I'm going to write it as a to the power 5 over 20. The common and with the same common denominator, I'm gonna write here as in products would be the power one fifth. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna write it as four over twenty. So b to the power one fifth is now understood as the power of b b to the power of four over twenty. The power one fourth on a is now understood as the power of five over twenty on a. Okay. So now these two. In my next step, a to the five twentieth. I'm seeing that as a to the fifth power being raised to the power 1 over 20. And then I'm doing the same for that b to the 4 over 20. So I'm writing that as b to the fourth power, but raised to the 1 over 20 power. Okay. And now with this here, now I have the same uh, exponent. And I'm, I'm, using, I'm, I'm using that distributive property in the reverse way right here. So now I can combine that into one power, one power of one over 20. So I'm making it 
a to the fifth in product with b to the fourth with all raised up to the 1 over 20. And now we're very close to our goal here. We want to, re we want to write this as a final, a one final root expression. And so in that way, I'm seeing this as the 20th root of uh, a to the fifth times uh, b to the fourth. And that's how I have accomplished my task right there. Okay, so we were asked to simplify the expression by combining it into one root expression. So we started out with a product of separate root expressions, and then we brought it all into one root expression. Okay, and then the work here is along the way, I, I made the ultimate goal. What I did here the, the essentially was that I turned each of these into rational expression, and I, made, I rewrote each of the rational expression here to have to contain the LCD. Okay, so you are required to know how to find the LCD. And then once you have successfully written each of the powers here, each of the rational expressions here to have the LCD, then I'm gonna, that's how I did the trick right there. I put the numerator to go with the number and then leave that here as a rational expression, one over 20. And here, one over 20 again. So the point is to have the same power here. And then I apply the distributive property to recombine them into one power of a product. And then that's how I arrived at the root, the final root expression. All right, so part B of the example, we are asked to simplify the expression by combining it into one root expression. So here we have a product of two separate root expressions. So to proceed with this task right here, what I'm writing, what I'm doing now, I'm gonna rewrite each of these root expressions in our product here as a rational expression. So the first one right here, x to the Three fourths, and this is this is now no surprise to anyone learning up to this point. And then we are in product with okay, y to the one third power. And once again, this expression from the cube root to be expressed as a one third power is not a, a, a surprise to anyone learning up to this point. And so you have seen the work from part A earlier. So now I'm going to take that exact uh, fundamental. I'm gonna find the LCD of these two denominators here and rewrite each of these uh, rational expressions here to have the LCD or to contain the LCD. So that means now I'm looking at the three-fourths power here. The three-fourths and the one-third LCD is gonna have to be 12. And so three-fourths is gonna be rewritten as nine over 12. So x to the three-fourths is now rewritten as x to the nine twelfth in product with y to the, so one third now is rewritten as four twelve. Okay. Now I have reached to having two rational expo exponents with least common denominators in the, in the exponent. Okay, and so now the, in the next step, I'm rewriting x to the nine twelve as x to the ninth. The numerator goes inside the parentheses. And then I have now one over 12 as the, overall power. And then I'm gonna rewrite y to the 412 right here as y to the fourth power in parentheses raised to the 112 power. Now I'm showing the common power of, the, of this product. Now I can apply the, the, the distributive the property of powers, making it now x to the ninth, y to the fourth power, all raised to the power 112. And this is now close to our final goal right here. We want to re-express this as an overall one root expression. That's making it now the 12th root of x to the ninth times a y to the fourth power. And that is how I have accomplished that goal right there. Okay. All right, so let's look at one example right here where we apply the the nature of a rational expression into reducing a root expression right here, into simplifying a root expression. So a problem like this, at our learning up to this point, is not a surprise to anyone. But uh, my intention for this example here is that now since we unlock the nature of root being a rational expression, that allows us more options into, in terms of how we can simplify an, an expression like this. Okay, and so I'm now gonna start out with the problem as following. So we have Q root of, and inside we have a product of 27 times x to the 6 times y to the 9 times z cubed. 
So I'm going to start out by writing the entire expression here as 27 x to the 6, y to the 9th, z to the z cubed, all to the 1 third power. So I took advantage of our understanding by seeing the cube root here as an overall 1 third power. Okay? And so now with the distributive property that we have just learned, I can see that I can see the expression here as a product of 27 and x to the 6 in products with y to the 9 in products with z cubed. That's why now I'm allowed it to do the following. 27 to the 1 third times x to the 6 to the 1 third times y to the 9th to the 1 third and times z cubed to the 1 third. Okay, and so now clearly 27 to the 1 third is understood as a cube root. That's making it a 3. That here is an x to the 6 thirds because we multiply these two powers here times y to the 9 thirds because we multiply these two powers here and times z to the 3 thirds because we multiply these two powers here. And so in the end, let's simplify down each of these uh, fractions. And so I'm looking at uh, 3. 6 over 3 now is reduced down to 2. So we're looking at x squared. 9 over 3 now is reduced down, is reduced down to 3. So we're looking at y cubed and uh, z to the first power. And this answer here should be consistent with our understanding from the, from the lessons that we uh, the, uh, learned how to simplify a cube root.